let's take a look at a hot plastic welding gun that you insert various bits into the end of. And these staples uh, are heated up by passing current through them like a sort of soldering gun. And then you press them into the plastic and let them cool. I have not tried this yet. The reason I've not tried it is because I thought it'd be quite fun for you to see what it's like for someone to try one of these the very first time. So let's plug it in. It is a square pin plug-in in the UK. This is good. It came from Timo. Um, which uh, is interesting. There is a very flickery LED. That's going to be a resistor and LED, isn't it? What happens if I pull the trigger? It's going to go bang. Mm. Oh, there's a LED in the front that is also very flickery. Oh, what's the voltage? So I'll put these out of the way. It came with tons of these. Let's get the supply in. Is it going to be AC or DC? Let's provisionally go to, well, 200 volts. Let's be super generous and stick it to 200 volts DC and see what happens. Don't think it's going to be that high. Let's bring the meter where you can see it. Pull the trigger. Nothing. That suggests it might actually be AC output. Hold on. Let's put it to 20 volts AC. If that is AC output, then it's a little transformer inside. Oh, there you go. 3 volts, 3.36 volts AC, apparently. That suggests it may just be a very, very pushed transformer inside. Okay, let's find a bit of plastic. Here is a bit of plastic. This was formerly a bit of a Tesla. A Tesla headlight. Is this the crack bit here? That is the crack bit there. I suppose I should kind of clean it off first. No, let's pretend I'm a real garage and not clean it off. Okay, I shall put one of these staples into it. I'm going to have to be careful because it only goes down so far. I think this is going to be super simple inside. I was hoping it was going to be a current regulated power supply. I don't think it is. Is it going to buzz? No buzzing. Is it hot? Hmm. It, it does. It's heated up. Right. Let's try holding this together. And I'll zoom down in this. I shall also focus on it. And I shall try and hold it together while I do this. Try and hold it together. Can this be brightened up a little bit? Too bright? Probably. Yeah, this isn't, I'm also going to be holding this at an angle. So is there a way I can do this that actually is visible? I shall try holding it like this. This is not going to work very well, is it? I'm not really too bothered if it goes together badly. Yeah, let's uh, do it this way. You're just going to have to, it's going to be masked, isn't it? You're not going to see this, but I shall try. So I shall pull the trigger and uh, apply it to this. I can see smoke. Hopefully it's not from the internals of the unit. Oh, and the staple's gone in. So I release the button. Let it cool a bit. And it comes off, and the staple is now in, and you let it cool for a while. Okay. Now, while it's cooling then, let's do one vertically, just into the plastic in general. Just so you can see what happened there. Crumble, crumble, crumble. trying to get it out. They all tangle with each other. And once that's cooled, theoretically, you can just snap these wires off, although some of them do seem to come with uh, side cutters for doing it. So tell you what, I shall stick this in here. It seems very loose, actually. I may deliberately just splay that out a little bit just to make a better electrical connection. It seems like a good idea. Maybe that was a bad idea. Okay, it's in. So I shall hold it up like this. I shall focus down onto... This is not... Not the best lighting, is it? No, not to worry. Uh, I shall focus down onto about there. And we shall try putting it in like this. So a bit of smoke. Then the staple starts sinking in. And when it reaches the desired depth, just let go of the trigger. Give it a second to cool. Pull it off, and that should be it. Okay, so let's see if this one's cool enough to snap the legs off. So they do snap off quite flush. And now it is kind of joined, but, you know, you'd have to join the sides as well, because that is now literally wobbling on a bit of wire. Okay, right, that's enough. Let's open it up. 
there is a limit to how much fun you can have watching someone just basically melt plastic. So I shall put this bit of Tesla out the way. I shall snap these off because uh, otherwise I will do something terrible like stand on it. That snapping bit does work. Right, it is now unplugged, so let's zoom back out again. Let's do a more sensible exposure level and let's focus down to about a nice working height. Um, I did check the fuse is in circuit, but it is a 13 amp fuse. Technically speaking, a 3 amp would probably have done this better, but uh, 13 amp it is. It's what they've put in. I suppose we should be lucky they've put any sort of fuse in at all. Um, is this going to reach these screws? No, no, it's not going to reach the screws. Am I going to have to use my dangerously non-compliant VDE screwdriver that has been cut so that I can reach things? Yes, I am. The screwdriver that coincidentally has stuff on it. What's it going to be? Is it just going to be a little transformer in here? Quality control pass 14. Excellent. Good job. Number 14. Well, we'll actually judge that once we've seen the inside of it. They've passed it on the outside. It would be kind of pleasing if it was just a little transformer, but it means that, well, I'm not sure how much power it's putting out. The dehumidifier forest just come on in the background. That's quite annoying. Bad timing, dehumidifier. That will make the audio weird. The audio is always weird, though. My voice is weird. Okay, so we've got the screws out. And we're ready to part the case. Okay. Maybe we're ready to part the case. The case doesn't want to part. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's just a transformer. It literally is just a little transformer being pushed very, very hard. Likewise, the LED at the front will probably be just hooked straight across the mains. So here's the incoming supply. There's the little trigger. The trigger does two, three things. Uh, this one goes out to the red LED, comes back. There's a resistor built into the red LED. And then, likewise, it goes... The switch side goes out to the transformer. Of course, yeah, this one's just permanently illuminated. It's just a resistor in series, right? Tell you what, I shall draw the schematic. Not that it's going to be terribly exciting. The transformer isn't very hot for uh, for those sort of high current moments it had. But you know what? I can also clamp this and we can see what sort of current it's drawing. One moment, please. OK, before showing you the schematic, let's do some electrical tests. So I've got a clamp meter here set to AC current. I've got a fluke meter here set to AC voltage because it is just a plain transformer. And being very careful because this has live contacts in the back of it, I shall squeeze the trigger briefly. And while that's heating up, it displays one volt, about 12 amps. Then it drops as the thing heats up. It's getting very hot. Yes. So I did some tests. The zigzaggy one, the big zigzaggy one, 1 volt, 12 amp. The shortest one, the thinnest one, this one here, was 0.8 volts, 14 amps. So it is really just hovering around, say, 14 watts-ish. Technically speaking, it's 12 watts. Oh, hold on, let's do it. Let's do the maths. 12 watts divided by 12 volt amps, should I say, since the transformer, divided by the 14 amps equals... 0.857. Yeah, let's say it's 12 watt. So a 12 volt amp transformer. Make sure this is unplugged now. Let's get the meters out the way. I used the fluke because it had the crocodile clips on it already. Also, people value the fluke because it's the daddy meter. Let me just put that out of the way. Right, let me show you the schematic. Things worth your note. The 13 amp fuse is in line. Unfortunately, they've switched the neutral. The neutral is going down to the correct connection. They've put the neutral through the switch instead of live. The red LED, which is on all the time, is because the red LED is... Well, I'll show you in the schematic. I shall show you in the schematic. That's the best bet. It's not a complex schematic. I really was not expecting that to just be a transformer in there. It's quite pleasing that it is. 
Incoming AC supply, there's the neutral up there, going through the switch. But before it goes through the switch, it's got a 200k resistor and a red LED. The red LEDs don't mind so much being abused. Uh, so, technically speaking, it only lights half wave, which is why it was very flickery. But also, on the other half wave, it will avalanche above a certain voltage and it will conduct in the other way. So that resistor is going to get pretty hot if you just leave it plugged in all the time. The, you've got the... Moment reaction push button, and then you've got the white LED, which is a 150k resistor, but it's also got a diode in series because the gallium nitride LEDs do not like being reverse biased. Uh, it damages them, and even this arrangement here, there's enough leakage in that diode that it's not going to be great for the LED. Then it feeds the primary of the transformer. Things worth mentioning. The primary transformer is the 240 volt winding, or 120 volt if you're in America. Then you've got the... Uh, coupling the, the iron chorus effectively and then you've got the very low number of turns of the secondary which is putting out basically one volt and this secondary the wire it's not a split bobbin they've literally wound the secondary directly over the top of the primary i'm not sure what s separation there is in there and the wires that are coming off to avoid any introduction of resistance they've basically taken the wires the copper coated well, the copper wires, the tin copper wires, or are they aluminium? Who knows? Uh, they look copper because they've got that coloured. Now I'm suspicious they might just be aluminium. But they uh, have been brought straight out without any other connections to these big brass rods with the machined ends that are designed to just basically make a loose electrical connection, which is not great at low voltage, onto the uh, things. If it ever makes a bad connection, just wiggle things about a bit or clean the inside of that and splay the pins apart just to get them a better sort of friction fit in the end because it is basically just a friction fit. But that's it. There's not much in it. It's it, the main thing. If you got rid of all the LEDs, it's a button and sears the transformer, putting out the low voltage, which makes those bits of wire heat up and then you stuff them into the plastic. So there we go. It's quite a neat case though, I have to say. I was expecting that if it was transformer, it was going to be filling the whole thing up. It's a really small transformer. Um, and I was kind of expecting it to be a switch mode power supply because it was so light. And that would have kind of made sense. But having said that, what could be simpler than this? It's just not really going to break down. It's just that. Oh, worth mentioning, I don't see the telltale bulge of a thermal fuse. So I don't know if there is a thermal fuse in here. Maybe there is uh, without actually overheating it who knows to be honest given the market it's probably not got a thermal fuse but there we have it very basic very simple could be improved could have better circuit of the leds but ultimately just the simple transformer approach is more or less the same as they use in the heat sealers as well and it is uh, completely acceptable very interesting device